Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to the Mario Cristobal Show, presented by Kia. Joe Zagacki alongside my broadcast partner, Don Bailey Jr., the University of Miami coming off a massive win against Texas A&M this past weekend at Hard Rock Stadium. It had, it had everything you wanted, and it checked every single box. And then some, yeah. Joe. You had a great crowd. You had the 1983 National Championship team here, and you had a Miami football team that showed resilience and scored points and played outstanding defense. Momentum is in Miami's corner. They've got to keep it going on Thursday against Bethune Cookman, 7.30 kickoff at Hard Rock. The fans can help with that. Coach Cristobal's put them back to work. Everybody went right back to work, even though it's a short week, and everybody understands the importance of this game. Okay, we'll talk more about it with University of Miami head coach Mario Cristobal coming up next. Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to the Mario Cristobal Show presented by Kia. Joe Zagacki alongside Don Bailey Jr., University of Miami head coach Mario Cristobal. Hurricanes coming off a 48-33 victory over Texas A&M at Hard Rock Stadium. What a magnificent day, Coach. Uh, let's just start with that. From, from your perspective, uh, just put into perspective what, the, what that kind of win and day meant to your program. Well, first of all, I think uh, it was important to honor the 83 team that was here. That was massive. Uh, for us and then just for for the players themselves first and foremost but for our team our university uh, the community the city uh, it was an awesome day through and through top to bottom um, especially because the team battled back from some early miscues and some adversity and just kept coming and uh, hard rock was electric and it really it was an incredible day uh, we learned a lot from it grew a lot from it and now all sights are set on the next opponent Coach, you have a blueprint that has worked for you for many, many years, and you build, try and build resiliency, and that's through hard work and investment, and we certainly saw that you were able to, be able to handle it last weekend. No doubt. You, know, you, can, you can read all the self-help books, and, right. and you can talk about it and have all the guest speakers that you want to on resiliency and toughness and fighting adversity, but if you don't present it in practice, if you don't create difficult scenarios and situations for your players on a daily basis, well, you're not really training them for it. Um, all week long, they talked about how they were trained for this, they were built for this, and they were ready for the moment, and um, they, they just they did exactly what they knew they could do and super proud to be a Miami Hurricane. And this was a great matchup of speed on the perimeter, which I thought you won there. Also a great matchup inside, line of scrimmage on size, strength, and physicality. Thought you won that, and then I thought your team kind of uh, reflected its head coach because your team was intense from the kickoff right until the last second ticked off the clock. They were, you know, it was, it was interesting at halftime. Um, there was a, a very determined look in everybody's eye where everyone felt, hey, if we clean up our issues, we're going to be able to take over this game. Uh, it's not going to just be handed to us. We're going to have to play by play, series by series, quarter by quarter. And it might happen the last play of the game, but eventually we're going to have a chance to take over this game, and we can and we will. And, uh, again, credit to the players, man. They did it. Defensively, Texas A&M's quarterback, Connor Wigman, he is a guy who started four games last year, started the first game, of course, this year, our game. No picks in his career. Mm -hmm. You come up with two of them, mm -hmm. and you get a fumble recovery as well. Pretty impressive. Yeah, the defense, um, Coach Gidry and company, uh, along with those players, they, they dialed it up and they just brought it. And a lot of that is a result of, as the game wore on, you know, we got to the quarterback on different, maybe not sacked them as many times, but certainly got to them, mm -hmm. forced the ball out, forcing quick decisions and sometimes not the best decisions, you know. So all in all, just a, a, a team, a unit effort. Um, and the enthusiasm, the juice of that defense, especially with several guys getting nicked up and having to come out, uh, was incredibly just, uh, man, just satisfying and, and just awesome to see the guys the way they support each other and push and fought and they just kept showing a hunger and appetite to go out and get some more. Uh, before we get too far down the road, Cam Kitchens is such a special player in person. It, he's uh, a microcosm of him was the interception and then he flashes that perfect smile. And he has got so many people rooting for him. How's he doing? He's doing well. You know, obviously, he, uh, we're fortunate where he is. He's given the best medical uh, protocol and services and, and care and monitoring. And he's doing really, really well. And, um, we, you know, we expect him to be 
really good uh, in the near future. Coach, a new name to the roster, Jaden Davis, and mm. glad he's here. Glad he's a Miami <laughs> Hurricane. Wow. What a game he played. Yeah. Man. I mean, and you know what? Everyone talks about the fumble, which was huge, right? I mean, it just it changed so many things for us in that game. But the stops, right? Those third down stops, just short of the markers, right? That cause a fourth down flinch and a penalty, and all of a sudden they have to settle for a field goal instead of getting a seven. And um, Jaden was all over the field, all over it. And he is, he's physical, he's smart, he's tough. Um, credit to him for coming into our culture and immediately jumping in, fitting in, and becoming just a huge member of this organization. And his hard work, again, paid off. And, and he played out there with, with a bunch of guys like him, just a bunch of really hungry dogs that want to go eat, and they ate. You have so many big plays in this game. It's, it's hard to even figure out where to start. But the kickoff return, Richard mm -hmm. Smith, uh, a beeline to the end zone, gets a couple of big blocks, one by Restrepo. Yeah. It was just a thing of beauty. Yeah, you know, Santana Moss said it a while back, right? Big time players find a way to make, make big time plays in these big time games. And the guys, they made them in when the games were, were hang, when the game was hanging on the balance, you know, really critical times, plays were made by different guys. I mean, you look at it spread all over the field. I mean, everyone had an opportunity to help us win this game. And for the most part, guys took advantage of it and made it happen. Coach, week one, you rush for 250 yards, and week two, you throw for over 300 and five touchdowns, but you protected your quarterback. That's important. Absolutely. You know, it's, a, I mean, Coach Dawson is, he's exceptional. Um, you know, whatever we have to do to win football games, we're going to do. And right now, we're, we're in a blessed situation where we feel we have confidence running the football, we have confidence throwing the football. Um, we have confidence in our receivers, our running backs, our tight ends. Our offensive line is playing at a high level. Um, and the best part about all of this is that we got after all their butts today because they wanted to, because they want to get better. Um, they're, they're, they're feeling an addiction to just betterment and improvement. And that's the job of our coaching staff and the team leaders to keep pushing those high standards that we have set and holding ourselves accountable to it. So. It's a, it's a really good vibe, it's a really good mood, and we're, we're looking forward to our next practice tomorrow in preparation for Bethune Cookman. 300 yard game, five touchdowns for Tyler. Ninth time in his career that he's gone over 300 yards. I thought he made some beautiful throws, and one of the things that's interesting about Tyler is he, he's one of those guys where there's no, not real high, not real low. When he makes a great throw to Isaiah Horton, and it's as if he expects to make those kind of plays so you don't see a big eruption of joy from him because I think he has those high standards. Tremendous presence about him, uh, very decisive. Uh, he, he has complete ownership of the offense. He knows what we're doing. He feels really confident knowing what the defense is doing, um, how quickly he can get to his reads, uh, how accurately he can get the ball out in tight windows or in open spaces, uh, his outlets, where he's protected, where he's not protected. Um, his knowledge of the game just continues to grow more and more and more. But again, him uh, as a leader, as a performer, as an accountable guy, uh, he's, been, he's been awesome. Coach, everybody has their, their why on why they play this game. And I, I think the why for Corey Flagg last week is he's from Texas and he <laughs> wanted to go home and, and be able to, to talk about this the rest, really, the rest of his life. Yeah, I mean, he it's, played well. it's important. He played great. He really yeah. did. He's, um, he's such an important member of this football program. Uh, he does so many things, you know, I, special teams is something, you know, you, we, we don't get to talk much about, but his, his contributions on special teams, uh, being a linebacker, um, being a, a guy that's been a leader on this team for a while now, again, uh, hats off to him for his performance, uh, for his leadership, and for just bringing so much value to this organization. Coach Dawson has brought a lot of different things to your offense. One of the, one of the areas that's jumping off the charts right now is red zone. Uh, almost perfect in the red zone in terms of, well, actually are perfect in the red zone scoring and then touchdowns creeping up towards 70%. Those are pretty good numbers. And I always think in the red zone, you have to either be a great running team or be really creative. And it seems like you're trending toward both. Well, he, um, he's disappointed so our players that that's not higher. We mm -hmm. certainly had our opportunities uh, to have some conversions and, and keep ourselves scoring sevens. I, our defense feeds off that juice now. If you get our defense the opportunity to get after the passer uh, and give Coach Kidru the opportunity to, to work, you know, in favorable situations with the sticks, 
we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, so, but Coach Dawson, uh, the offensive players, um, the offensive coaches, they, they invest a lot of time. They did in the summer. Um, they certainly do throughout the course of the week. And those minds, they, they, collaborate, they collaborate really well. They do. Um, they share ideas. Coach Dawson puts it together at the end of the day and then calls it. Um, and again, it's a tremendous amount of uh, credit to him and the staff. Coach, you never know when the, a player's going to to catch up to his ability. Jacoby George, three touchdowns, could have been four. We're going to talk about that, I'm sure, the rest of his life. But just a guy that has, has worked hard and is finding his spot and has the proof now in the production. Great young man and a great family. And uh, it's, it's super important that all of us together just keep pushing him because the ceiling, there is no ceiling, you know? And a guy like that, um, you know, he's been here for a little bit, mm -hmm. and he proved Saturday what a difference maker he could be on this team. What a great future he has. And it was fun to see him go out there and have that type of a performance. It was, it was better to see him bounce back after the miscues. Yeah. You know, the drop. That to me was the most important thing because it shows that we will put trust and confidence in players that work at it. And if a player comes back and then is able to come through and perform, it's even better. But uh, proud of him, going to push him harder than ever. I hope he hears it. You know, I hope he sees this program. I say we're going to push him harder than ever because we need him and we need guys like him to keep stepping up. Because when you show it one time, you should be able to do it all the time. Uh, expecting big things from him and really proud of him and thankful for him. And picking up on that, the, the touchdown and third down, um, he bounces off a guy, gets into the end zone, but maybe the bigger part of that topic is that was such a big play because in the new rules, that clock is ticking down. They're holding on to their timeouts. It's a very big play, right? Because if you don't get the first down, they still have two timeouts left. Uh, what does that play just say about the mentality of the University of Miami games? kind of hanging in the balance, and you throw it down the sideline for a 64-yard touchdown. Yeah, no, we had made the decision, and, and that's Coach Dawson's mentality anyway. It's not like he had to be informed of anything different. Is he, we were going to stay aggressive. In a game like this, you're not going to you're not going to take the air out of the ball mm -hmm. with six minutes to go. you you got to keep trading blows, right? And then you got to get your stops. Um, and, he's, again, uh, the players really, really trust him and the scheme and he trusts them as well. And we had practiced that a bunch and felt really good about the matchup. And uh, again, just a perfectly executed protection, um, snap, throw, catch, all that. The, the bonus stuff is, that's strength and conditioning, right? Yeah. You know, be able to catch it, you know, take on a hit, keep your balance and body control. Fix your face mask. <laughs> face mask, yeah, that's, that's, that's something that's new for me. But um, absolutely, you know, a lot, of things, uh, a lot of things were validated on Saturday. A lot of hard work, a lot of time invested, a lot of really good things were validated. Coach, you never fail to thank your scout team. You said if we're, if we're going to play great on Saturday or Thursday, we've got to get great production out of our scout team. And you even recognize those guys each week, the ones that stood out. Talk to us about the value of them and, and the picture that they have to present. I just always go back to just being a player and Rusty Medeiros being a freshman and him just wearing us out every single day right. and having the coordinator yell at me, yell at the offensive line. Oh, you can't even block this scout team guy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. He's an All-American, best <laughs> in the country. Place. And um, I, think, I think we have a lot of guys now that are on the scout team and they understand that it's more of a developmental squad than it is a scout team. And they understand that they have to go hard to help us win the game, but also to develop. Because in essence, when we, when we run a scout team, we change the terminology to our calls, so they're running our systems, mm -hmm. you know? So whatever, even though it's somebody else's particular, we call it as we would call it, or as similar as we can, so that they get double reps at what we're doing. And they bring it, man. They bring it, they don't, they don't flinch. They're not gonna bow out. They're not gonna brother-in-law it, right? Remember that and during the <laughs> scout team days? They're not gonna do that. And, um, We've got a lot of production, a lot of quality reps, and you could ask our players. You really should ask our players how valuable and how instrumental the scout team has been in helping us get better. All right, Coach, we'll talk more about Texas A&M and Bethune-Cookman coming up Thursday at 7.30. But right now, time for our high-performance moment of the week presented by Kia. And what a moment this was, Don Bailey Jr. Brashard Smith breaks this thing open on the kickoff return. And he does, Joe. It's a middle return. Does a nice job fielding it, but watch Restrepo. I mean, he just absolutely <laughs> lays out 
the, the defensive player, and it just opens the door for Brashard Smith to take it to the house. Brashard Smith goes 98 yards on this kickoff return, just a beeline to the end zone, and gave Miami all sorts of momentum. Also gave the crowd a lot to cheer about. That is our Kia High Performance Moment of the Week. Brashard Smith goes 98 yards against Texas A&M for the touchdown, helping Miami to their huge win over the Aggies of Texas A&M. It's the Hurricanes and the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats Thursday night at Hard Rock Stadium, 7.30 kickoff. Hurricanes looking to go 3-0. We'll talk more about Bethune here in a moment. A uh, little bit more on Texas A&M. I made this note for myself. Defensively, you, your defense, you know you're getting tackled. When they hit you, you know you're getting tackled by your guys so far. We're improving. Yeah. We, we've improved our tackling, and it's in the way we practice. Uh, thud is a real thing, and it's never good enough. Like, if you're out there Tuesday and Wednesday, you're like, man, did we thud up well enough? Are we going to tackle well enough? And we, When you emphasize it and it looks good, well, you got to emphasize it a thousand times more. So, But that is, again, that's practice and preparation becoming game reality. That's all, that's all that is. And we're going to keep improving on it. Coach, talk about improvement. Some basic stuff. Basically, a year ago, you went to College Station. We lost a football game. And a year later, you come to face that same team, and you beat them 48 to 33. What are some of the foundational things that are now becoming cemented in place here at this program? True resiliency. I mean, that's what sticks out, right? I mean, I felt that, um, I mean, but again, anytime you, anytime you rebuild something and you have a change in culture, I mean, it's you got to be willing, if you really believe in the culture that you're trying to implement, you got to be willing to take some kicks right to the stomach, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but th what really stands out is like a true commitment to the standard improving. We're not all the way there yet. We're not. I, I would never lie about that. We're not, but we're getting there. But real resiliency, because I think the players would tell you. They'll tell you that a year ago, that block punt, that <laughs> muffed uh, punt return, would have been the end, yeah. you know? And these guys, I mean, they ran out there on defense like, let's go, man, let's get a stop, you know? And that's, that's different. That changes the energy. And, you know, belief is, is a real thing. And, and belief in, like Coach Johnson used to tell us all the time, you know, he used to call it what swagger. What was swagger? Swagger was confidence, right? Confidence not because you woke up and say, hey, I feel good about it. It's because you put in time. They've invested the time, you know. They should feel good about any situation, and they'll they'll tell you that there's no bad play, there's no injury, there's no bad call that we can't overcome if we just, and you know. So, James Williams and Cam Kitchens, they were going the whole distance, playing so hard in that game the other day. As a game goes on, what do you think their effect is? on the opponent as the game goes on because they those two guys cover a lot of ground and they're really physical yeah. and i would think that at some point either physically or mentally it had, must have an effect on the opponent well they're they're always there i mean if the ball's thrown or ran there you're going to see five you're going to see 20. they're going to be around it and uh a great you know we haven't spoken enough about james james played uh, as good of a game as you can play you know and uh, yeah, he plays with an edge. I get it, you know, I, I do. And you know, we're gonna keep getting better at that stuff. But brother, that guy plays the game the way it's supposed to be played, physical and hard, right? And that's something that I think uh, has been missing in, uh, for Hurricane football for a while. Yeah. Okay. And, and he plays and with a big it. smile. He, he, you can see, not everybody loves football, but he finds joy in football. Well, how many six foot five safeties yeah. have you seen? I mean, right. Six five of he's hunching, right? I mean, he's. He's a real one. Um, I think that he is the perfect fit in this. This scheme is perfect for him. He's perfect for the scheme. Uh, Coach Gidry, Coach Adai, to stay, they have a strong relationship with him. Uh, and I think, you know, he really does trust them to uh, put him in the best position to make plays. Coach, you are so committed to strength and conditioning. And I, and I always look at yards after catch as something that's proof. I mean, even at a skill position, but you had over 240 yards of yards after catch. That tells you. Not only you're fast, but you have good conditioning and you can break break tackles. Getting better, you know, yeah. both making guys miss and just sometimes tearing right through 
tackles, you know, literally escaping, you know, dipping a shoulder, dropping a step. I thought Restrepo's was was perfect on the sideline, right, where he caught the ball. The ball was placed where you want to place because it naturally turns you. But to be able to drop step, dip the shoulder, and then come out at full speed, I mean, that's that's really, uh, those are game-winning type plays, right? Those are the hidden yardage pieces that end up being points um, and certainly the difference in the game. Uh, Bethune Cookman is here on Thursday night, 7.30 kickoff at Hard Rock Stadium. Uh, what are some of the things about Bethune Cookman that you, that you need to concentrate on? You probably have a lot of guys that think, hey, you know, I, and we could have played for Miami or, or some other team uh, in a power five. What are some of, the, some of the keys that must be accomplished against Bethune? Sure, well, defensively, they're just very disruptive. Yeah. You know, I think they have almost 14 tackles for losses. Um, and they do it because their front is active, it's athletic, it's big. Uh, they move them around a bunch. You know, seldom do you see them just play static football where they're just sitting there. Uh, their stunts and their pressures, they do a good job disguising them. Uh, when they get there, they know how to tackle. And, and they're fast. Overall, their team speed is excellent. You know, they run well. Uh, they strike in man coverage. They're extremely effective. They can play man. Well, anytime a team can play man coverage, right, they can add a guy to the box and making it difficult for your numbers, for your angles in the run game. Just really impressed with their defense. Um, offensively, their quarterback is doing a great job. I mean, he's completing almost 80, 75, 80 percent mm -hmm. of his passes. Uh, just really fast. A fast athletic yeah. football team. Uh, explosive capabilities in the uh, return game on special teams. Just again, a Coach uh, Woody has done a really good job of putting the pieces together. They got a good football team. Coach, you don't have to tell your team about what's coming because they spend countless hours watching them. So I mean, everybody knows nowadays that if you don't play your game, the Thune Cookman will cause problems. Well, we we have a standard that we got to get. We're nowhere near playing as good as we need to play, mm -hmm. and we need to keep getting better and watching tape. They have a lot of good players on that football team. And we know that we have to be at our best on Thursday. Um, and because of that, we practice the way we did today. And we're going to practice that way again tomorrow. And yep, we just played a physical game. Yep, it's a short week. So what? I mean, right. these, these circumstances are not unique to us. The team Cookman's going through the same thing. And they're getting ready just like we are. So mm -hmm. let's, um, let's keep working, man. That's the most important thing. Let's keep working. Let's get you know all the noise and all the praise out the way. And let's get right back to work and, and, and getting better and making sure that we establish a high standard for Miami Hurricane football. Before we wrap it up, I do want to throw in uh, real quick, uh, you had a huge recruiting section there the other day. Mm -hmm. So they got an opportunity to see what this thing can be like. They got a chance to see Hard Rock Stadium being really loud and the players responding. Uh, so that's probably, uh, I know that all that is important and uh, just kind of a microcosm of what Miami Hurricane football is going to be. No doubt. It was, it was maxed out. I mean, every possible ticket for recruits was, uh, was eaten up. And it was the best of the best. They were there. And, you know, we've always preached from the beginning, hey, we're going to keep building this thing, right? We're going to keep working and bringing in the right guys. Um, and the guys that were on the sidelines last year watching, a bunch of those guys are playing now and making plays. And now their buddies showing up at games are watching them play and have an SEC team come into our home stadium, the place is rocking, get a big win, explosive plays all over the place. It's like, okay, this is, this is Miami football. I get it, I like this, I wanna be a part of this. This is, uh, come on man, you remember, right? I mean, going, I remember going to the games, all it took was one game, one game, that's it, that's it, you know? I can, I can shut it down now. So um, it was awesome, uh, it is impactful and we intend to uh, maximize uh, on that momentum. All right, very good. Coach, thank you. Congratulations. Best of luck against Bethune on Thursday. Thank you, guys. Go Canes. All right, that's University of Miami head coach Mario Cristobal. We'll continue on the show right after this. Happy to welcome you back to the Mario Cristobal Show presented by Kia. Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr. All right, got to move forward. Bethune-Cookman coming up. 7.30, Thursday night game, short week for the Kings. In-state rivalry, Joe, there's a lot of guys that have played against each other on both sides. It's going to be important for Miami to understand where they are in their process. That big offensive line's got to come through also. They like the blitz. you got to protect Van Dyke. Yes, and I think that they proved last week that they can do a great job protecting Van Dyke. Okay, Miami and Bethune coming up on Thursday for Don Bailey Jr. and University of Miami head coach Mario Cristobal. I'm Joe Zagacki. We'll see you next time on the Mario Cristobal Show.